Hi kindergartners, my name is Shelby and I'm from Partnership for Kids. Thank you so much for being at school today so you can watch our video. Our topic today is achievers and to achieve something means to complete something successfully and there are a lot of people who have achieved great things in their lifetime by setting goals and working hard to complete their goals and you can achieve great things too. A time that I achieved a goal that I set for myself was in high school. I really wanted to buy a new phone. Um, my parents told me that they weren't going to buy it for me and that if I wanted it, I would have to buy it myself. So what I did was I set a goal to save as much money as I could from my um, job that I had and I saved a lot. I, every week, every time I got paid, I set some money aside from my the phone that I wanted and eventually after about a month, I was able to buy the phone that I wanted and I was really proud of myself because I achieved my goal. So if you want to achieve something, what you should, what you need to do is set a goal and work really, really hard to complete that goal. And our book today to go with our Achievers theme is called Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist. And for this book today, I have three words I've picked out, and every time we get to one of those words, I'm going to tell you what the word was, and then we are going to go back, and I'm going to reread the sentence, but when we get to that word... We're all going to read that word together. It was Saturday, and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. So my first word that I picked out was aquarium. So I'm going to go back and read this sentence. And when we get to the word aquarium, let's all read that word together, okay? It was Saturday, and Eugenie wanted to stay at the aquarium forever. An aquarium is basically like a big tank or a place where you have fish and other um, ocean or water plants in. That's where they live and that's where you can like feed them and watch them and especially at the zoo we have a big aquarium that has like sharks and a uh, big sea turtle and all kinds of and all kinds of ocean life in there. She wanted to smell the damp, salty air and stare at the glittery rainbow fish. She wanted to keep watching her favorite animals, the sharks. Eugenie pretended she was walking on the bottom of the sea. What would it be like to, be, to swim with her sharks, to breathe underwater with gills of her own? More than anything, she wanted to find out. When the summer came, Eugenie's mother took her to swim at a beach in Atlantic City. Stuffing sticky gum into her ears to keep the water out, Eugenie dove. Down, down, down. The salt sung her eyes, but she didn't want to miss a single fish. Constellations of sea stars speckled the pebbled sand. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. So my second word they picked out was ocean. So I'm going to go back and read this sentence again, and when we get to the word ocean, we're all going to read that word together. She imagined a silvery fin standing strong on her back, slicing through the ocean current. And an ocean is just a really big body of water. To others, sharks were ugly and scary, but Eugenie knew they were beautiful. As she glided through the cool water, she wished everyone could see sharks through her eyes. But the sharks were only in her mind for now. Eugenie decided to learn everything she could about them. So she dove. This time into books. Whale sharks, nurse sharks, tiger sharks, lemon sharks. Eugenie wanted to know about them all. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. So there's our first word again, aquarium. So I'm going to go back and read that sentence and we're going to say the word aquarium together. She also joined the Queens County Aquarium Society as its youngest member. Eugenie's notebooks filled with sharks. They swam in her daydreams and on the margins of her papers.
at home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. There's that word aquarium again, so let's go back and read that sentence and we'll say the word aquarium together. At home, Eugenie's mother surprised her with an aquarium of her own. A 15 gallon tank was much too small for sharks, but Eugenie saved her allowance to buy guppies, clownfish, and coral red snails. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. So there's ocean again. Let's go back and read that sentence again and say ocean together. It felt as big as an ocean in her room. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. And there's aquarium again. So let's go back and read that sentence again. Their small apartment became an aquarium, a laboratory, and a sanctuary. As she grew older, many were still telling Eugenie what to do. Forget those sharks. Be a secretary. Be a housewife. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the ocean. So my third word was scientists. So we're going to go back and read that sentence again and read the word scientists. And oceans is also in that sentence. So I'll read two words in this sentence. Okay. Eugenie wanted to study zoology, but some of her professors thought women weren't smart enough to be scientists or brave enough to explore the oceans. And scientist is somebody who studies a type of science, so the type of science that Eugenie wanted to study was animals, which would be zoology. And they said sharks were mindless monsters. Eugenie knew better. Her dream was as big as a whale shark. So again, Eugenie dove. She plunged into every course she could. Her laboratory became her home. From sunrise to sunset, she studied how fish grow, how they behave, and how they are put together, both inside and out. Despite all the people who didn't believe in her, Eugenie was becoming one of the smartest students in her field. Even after she earned her degree, many still doubted her. But Eugenie's work was just beginning. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. There's ocean again, so let's go ahead and read that. Eager to make discoveries of her own, Eugenie finally dove into the open ocean. In the Red Sea, Eugenie collected hundreds of fish, including three new species that had not been discovered before. So these are the three species that she found. This one is called the Red Sea Sand Diver. This one is called the Barred Xenia Pipefish. And this one is called the Volcano Triple Fin. Very cool that she discovered those. On a research mission exploring the, Palau the Palua Islands, Eugenie was diving alone when she encountered her first ever wild shark. She wasn't afraid. Instead, she thought it was beautiful. In Isla Mujeres, she, she dispelled the myth that sharks must keep moving to stay alive when she, swam, when, when she swam through dark caves, still and silent, full of resting sharks. Eugenie's daring heart grew bolder with each dive. Soon, they began to call her the Shark Lady. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. So we're going to read that sentence again because we have two of our words in it, scientists and oceans. So we'll say those words together. Eugenie had proven she was smart enough to be a scientist and brave enough to explore the oceans. As her courage grew, she began to love and understand her beloved sharks more and more, but she never forgot many, 
many still believe that sharks were mindless killers. Because of their scary reputation, humans were hunting sharks all over the world. Eugenie knew that sharks weren't stupid or mean. She was determined to prove everyone wrong. Eugenie fished, fished through her mind and devised a brilliant experiment. Could she train a shark the way a person trains a dog? Were sharks much smarter than, any, than anyone she knew? They were. Eugenie was the first scientist in the world to train sharks and even learned they could remember their training for at least two months after. So we have that word scientist in there again. So we're going to go ahead and read this sentence again and say the word scientist together. Eugenie was the first scientists in the world to train sharks and even learn they could remember their training for at least two months after. That is a long time. Sharks were not mindless killers. Sharks were beautiful. Sharks were smart. They deserved to be studied, protected, and loved. And Eugenie's dream was now a dream come true. And at the back of the book, we have all of these shark um, fun facts. So I'll go ahead and read a couple of them to you. But you will get a copy of this book so you can read all of these with friends or with somebody at home. So our first one says, sneaky skin. Sharks can move extremely fast in the water and the secret to their speed is in their skin. Shark skin is made up of dermal denticles, which are more like teeth than fish scales. Some swimsuit designers have even created swimsuits that mimic shark skin to help Olympians swim faster in the water. Okay, and then sharks are old, very old. The first sharks appeared over 400 million years ago. That is a long, long, long time ago. And their ancestors are still around today. They have survived five major extinction events, including one 65 million years ago that destroyed the dinosaurs. Okay, well, I hope that you all enjoyed that book. You will get a copy that you can take home with you. Um, I learned a lot of really cool facts about sharks I didn't know before, so I like that book a lot. So, the, once again, the most important thing when you're trying to achieve something is to set that goal and work towards it, and it's always okay to ask for help if you need help achieving that goal. So if your teacher could just pause the video at this moment and if everybody could go around and share um, something that they want to achieve when they grow up, this could be the kind of job that you want, maybe you want to move to Hawaii or maybe you want to have a whole bunch of pets, this could be anything that you want to achieve. So go ahead, pause the video and share and then unpause when you're finished sharing please. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing. Again, thank you so much for being at school today, kindergartners. I really hope you enjoyed our book. I thought it was a really cool one. Have a great rest of your day.